So in this uh, segment, we will address the question, when can I use the ideal gas law? Okay, I have a gas given to me. How do I know it's an ideal gas law assumption is accurate or not? Okay, and typically the answer, if you search online, will be at low pressure, right? But the question is, what is low pressure, right? As engineers, we, we like to quantify things. We cannot just work with, oh, it's low, right? And low pressure depends to me or to you or to a third party, right? Who knows what the low pressure is? Now I'm going to quantify it, okay? And this is aligned with, let's say, you know, if you ask me what is a low uh, temperature, you know, for, for, uh, for a nice day, for instance, I may say 75 Fahrenheit is low. Like if you ask the same question to somebody in Alaska, right? When you say low, maybe that's going to be, I don't know, 25 Fahrenheit, right? So that's what I'm trying to address in this particular session. So we are talking like engineers, okay? Okay, so the ideal gas uh, law, we mentioned that this is the most common version that I will be using, right? This is ideal gas law. So I'm gonna go ahead and add something to it, okay? I'm gonna call it a Z. The Z is actually called the compressibility factor, okay? This is called the compressibility, compressibility, yeah, that's good, factor, okay? So obviously, you can see from this relationship that if my uh, z is equal to 1, I get myself this, right? So then, then the, the, the goal is to find this, what is this uh, correction factor or compressibility factor will do, okay? As you will find uh, soon, this, this z uh, is a function of the pressure, temperature, as well as the gas itself, or whatever the gas that I'm using from one gas to another will be different, okay? But, wait, so we did some efforts to normalize the graphs that we are going to obtain, okay? The normalization is using something called PR, reduced pressure, which is the P that I'm dealing with, divided by the P critical. This, uh, basically, I'm normalizing, as I mentioned. What is the dimension of it? This is dimensionless, right? And do you remember this? Uh, let's say TV diagram for steam, right? We said that this is critical, so that's what I'm referring to over here, okay? And this is listed in the tables, uh, this information is given to us. And I do the same thing for TR, that will be T divided by T, critical. And again, this information is supplied in, uh, you know, Chengal's book, um, A1 and A1E, appendix 1. This is appendix 2, okay? So you can obtain this P critical. So I'm just normalizing. So what I'm, why am I doing this? The reason is, if I've obtained my PR and TR, now my Z will be a function of PR and TR, which is fine. I didn't really gain too much. But what I did gain, if you were careful, you noticed uh, up here that I also mentioned that this is a function of the gas. Now this is not a function of the gas, okay? So if I have my uh, particular PR and TR uh, pair is given to me, okay, this is given to me, I don't care what the gas is, the Z will be the same. There will be one unique Z that corresponds to this pair. So that is the power of it, okay? And right now what I'm going to do is there is actually, a, 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 you know, in Chengal 9th edition, so we have this uh, figure 3.48. So I'll, I'll let me kind of draw it, I'll show you, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I just, you know, as a new page, so I wanted to put a new uh, page. But let's look at this graph. So first, let's start with the x-axis. PR, reduced pressure. And you can see over here the, the curves like TR, 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 different values. I have a Z value, and this is right here is 1. Okay, this is supposed to touch here. So th this is here, okay. Um, so this works for any gas, okay. So now let's look at the observations. Look here, if TR is equal to 1, right, if I'm near here, right, TR is equal to 1, you know, like typically you may think that TR is equal to 1 and PR is equal to 1 is going to be not so good to use as an ideal gas equation. You will have like, like what, 20, 80% mistake in your uh, analysis, okay? So this is a terrible assumption. So, okay, so that's fine. But one good place that I would like to use is when PR is very, very small, very close to 1. So you can calculate it. So this information is, is, is a fair game. 
So you can see whether I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. So you're going to see, for instance, if I'm here, it's going to be 1, right? If I'm here, for instance, maybe it's 0 0.8, something like that, okay? Or 0 0.78, something like that, okay? So you can see how much I should, do, I should correct my ideal gas equation, okay? Um, but one warning that I want to have, that's why I don't like about the ideal gas, is this. If my P is uh, small, very small, there is a high chance that I will go into the compressed liquid region. Okay. Although your PR may seem like, okay, it's kind of very close, so I should be able to use the ideal gas equation. What happens is your fellow uh, students use the, the, this equation for compressed liquid region. And you can imagine, that kind of looks very bad, right, in an exam setting. You know? So that is something, you know, like a caution. You know, let's say caution, watch for going into compressed liquid phase. Okay, that's this, you know, a fair warning to you. Another observation that I can get from here is if my TR is equal to 2, do you see regardless of my pressure? Well, up to a reasonable range because, you know, I, I didn't go all the way to the, you know, very, very high pressures. But uh, if my TR is, uh, you know, 2, regardless of pressure to, to a degree, then I should be okay, right? I mean, look at it. It is like a little percentage is off as compared to ideal gas law, right? TR is equal to 2 is like a magic place to be. But the question arises, you know, like where is it TR is equal to 2, right? In order to calculate this, as you know, TR is equal to T divided by T critical, right? So I looked at T critical values for, for air. So it's, uh, it turns out that the T, T critical for air is 132.5 Kelvin, okay? So twice of it is going to be, you know, like when TR is equal to 2, if TR is equal to 2, then my T will be, give or take, uh, 265. So that's going to be like minus 8 degrees C. We subtract, you know, 265 minus 273.15. You get yourself minus 8 degrees C. Okay, not too bad. You know, like at TR, maybe you're going to get to this minus 8 uh, Celsius, right? So that's not too bad. That's reasonable. But let's do the same arrangement for T critical of water vapor, right? From the steam tables, I can obtain this information. And I actually write this down uh, already, but it was... 647.1 Kelvin. Then for TR to be 2, then I have to multiply this by 2. So then this this TR, you know, my T needs to be like, uh, it's not that important, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, after the period, but 1294 Kelvin, right? So that becomes 1020 Celsius. Okay, so this becomes 1020 Celsius. So that's awfully hot. So be careful. In the real life, it is kind of a bad assumption to use water vapor as ideal gas. I'm illustrating the reason why. Okay? For air, it may be more reasonable because I may be close to the TR is equal to 2 regime. So what I do is I should use my appendix A4, A5, A6, A7, A8 to get the information about uh, steam or water, or specifically water vapor, right? But there are instances where I don't have a table at the appendix. Then use, my recommendation is use this. Okay. Um, so again, please be careful when to use it, when not to use it. Okay. Um, and there's actually a graph in your book that, that plots this uh, TV diagram. TV diagram and they had this here and they say that do not, you know, only use, you can look at the numbers from your book, Chengal 9th edition, but you can use it in this regime. But the funny thing is, as the semester goes on and on, I see students going to this side and this side and this side. This line seems to be moving very fast towards this. And by the time we realize, like, week, week 10, this line is here, okay? And then this is my partial credit going down significantly, significantly, significantly to zero, right? So be very careful when you're using ideal gas law or even corrected with uh, compressibility factor for steam, okay? All right, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day.